The typical image that comes to mind when we consider interrelatedness is of large or small objects that are related to one another. That is not how I am using the word though. Although I don't dispute that, there is more to it. In reality, interconnectedness itself is what makes up things. The human mind finds it extremely difficult to imagine that something may be nothing more than interconnectedness. That interconnectedness ultimately ends up being what things are. In this way, things become nothing and nothing becomes everything. So, we shouldn't attempt to explain concepts like no thing or emptiness using traditional concepts. Nothingness, in its purest meaning, has little to do with nothing. It relates to interconnectedness or interrelationship. Likewise, each of us experiences this. You can ask, all right, exactly, precisely what is this thing called me? While you search inside for your actual self. Who or what is it really? You can't locate it more, no matter how hard you look. It is impossible to locate because interrelatedness is all that it consists of. There isn't any substance. Nothing to think, imagine, or see exists. It is empty in that sense that being said, it isn't empty in the sense that nothing exists. It is empty in the sense that it is unexpected or incomprehensible. When you experience love or fall in love, it feels extremely real to you, even though you can't see it, measure it, or give it any type of objective existence. However, we perceive it as more real than the things we consider to be real, certainly as more essential. Most people, when they are in love, value their relationship more than the durability of their toaster. There is absolutely no substance to the affection, despite the fact that it lacks any objective tangibility. One may center their entire lives around it. The thusness, or suchness, of each instant was a subject of discussion by the Buddha. It refers to the thusness, or suchness, of every apparent thing that we observe, not merely every time. This is the meaning in which I use the word being, much like the Buddha did when he spoke of something's thusness or suchness. When we recognize something's thusness or suchness, we are essentially recognizing interconnectedness itself. This ordinary moment, which has nothing particularly out of the ordinary about it, is awareness, and awareness is interrelatedness. It's more like interrelatedness is than interrelatedness is aware. The interrelatedness is awareness, not that which is aware, as some might believe. The main barrier to spirituality that any of us will likely encounter is the barrier between awareness and the objects of awareness. There is this world of things, and then there is seeing and experiencing this world of things, and yet the two are separate. This is the basic dualism. One of the biggest misconceptions regarding unity is that it turns the entire globe into a homogenized goo of consensus. In some ways, it's actually almost the reverse. It liberates your originality and enables you to accept the uniqueness of others. When we recognize the unity of things, uniqueness thrives. It doesn't become flattened, quite the opposite occurs. Simply said, you quit arguing about the difference that isn't the same as yours. If you persist long enough, are sincere, open-hearted, and truly desire the truth more than you want to succeed or be right, something will almost always come to light when two sides are open to engaging. With time, something truer than any of them initially was, will emerge from that encounter. 
If you have two open-minded individuals who recognize the value of truly connecting with one another, they will do so, and both will feel satisfied with the outcome because they both gain more knowledge than they had initially. There are differences, but that doesn't make something one. It's not that a tree doesn't resemble the sky differently, behave differently from the sky, or possess a unique form of life. The commonality is that a tree, an object, is nothing more than an interrelatedness. The interconnectedness of all things can be seen in the sky and in the consciousness of things. That is a justification derived from a perception. Enlightenment is basically the realization that what one is aware of and what one is seeing exists simultaneously. It is an arising that is continuously flowing since interrelatedness is never static. The quality of our vision and perception when we are able to view without the dualistic filter is what this actually comes down to. The basic separation between our consciousness and what consciousness is conscious of is what appears to be this impenetrable type of barrier between us and things, us and the world, and us and one another. When our awareness is sufficiently profound, the seemingly essential and unmovable impression that there is a fundamental difference or separation is actually dispelled. Interrelationship is just interrelating at its most fundamental, deepest level. It's not a case of things connecting. Everything ultimately get interrelated to one another. It is what we sense when vision is clear. The world shifts from being one of stuff to one of relationships. 